Hi guys, Christine here. And today I'm doing a quick tutorial video um, for these little pocket companions, um, small notebooks I've designed that are intended to live in your journal until you need to take them out because you're going off for the day. I know a lot of you have seen in my travel journal that I have sort of a bonus little notebook that I keep in here and it allows me to just slide it out and um, take it with me, throw it in my pocket or purse and have it available for inspiration. And in, in my case, it's for birding lists. Um, but then it becomes sort of an addendum to the book. And I really like that concept and I do it in a lot of journals. And I realized I had not done it in my own. This is my, my current journal. So I changed that and I designed these very vintagey feeling little notebooks um, to, to serve that purpose. So in this case, you can see it's in um, with a belly band in the back, similar to my travel journal, but I could just as easily use a little spark bird removable tuck spot and slide it in here and it will stay there. Or if I chose, I could simply clamp it in. So however you like to attach it, that's your, your call. Um, but there are lots and lots of designs already and I'm building more. If you are simply sewing a verse or hostile towards sewing, then there is at the end of this video, after we construct the booklets, a quick tutorial on doing a stapled version and how to get the best results for that. So if you're pressed for time or just, like I said, you're not a sewer, um, this is an option. So you have no excuse not to make this very simple um, little, little booklet. And even the sewing is so easy. It's a great beginner project and you really should give it a try because you could practice a lot and you can see I've already gone overboard. Oh, and then, and then this last um, little bit here I'll share with you is adding a closure for it. Um, this one I made for my husband and I added this little policy closure, um, making it next time I would use a smaller grommet here um, as I did in the back, but I wasn't sure I had one that was deep enough to go through um, what I was going through. It turns out I do, but I'd already done this one. So things to think about. That's it. I hope you enjoy these little books and make tons of them. They also serve a purpose of just being really cute notebooks on their own. So um, here they are, the very vintage feel. You can see um, definitely old world feeling. Um, and they're made with um, just cardstock and paper. And this was um, copier paper that I printed on both sides of. Now I want to talk for a few minutes quickly just about some of the some of the different paper choices you have and um, I, uh, options for printing because I printed and here I printed these pages this comes with some kits and then the graph paper comes with other kits um, I just mixed them up when I was printing so if you can print edge to edge absolutely no problem that's what you want so here you can see I printed these pages edge to edge both sides if you can't print edge to edge then you're going to wind up with a border on the top and bottom these sides wind up getting cut off after the book is put together um, but the tops and bottoms don't um, the book was designed to use a full eight and a half by eleven sheet cut in half so it's something to consider so if you can't print to the edge then you might want to consider using actual ledger paper and that would work or plain paper or any kind of paper or you know mix and match i mean use junk journaly paper tea stain paper whatever you like i did want to point that out though because it matters to the creation of the book the other thing is about the cover this cover was printed on um 110 pound cardstock which is a good sturdy piece of stock that should not be confused with a 110 pound index, which I recommend all the time and I do print on it all the time. I like this paper because it takes a really good print and it has a, enough um, sturdiness for most of the things I do, like the little mini pocket folders that you've seen me make. 
but it's actually equivalent or closer. It's not exactly equivalent, but it is almost as light as 65 pound cardstock. So the index is not, 110 pound index is not the same as 110 pound cardstock. And you just want to be aware of that. This is much, much thicker. This one is. So it's something to consider. You can do it. I've made some books with the lighter paper. Um, this cover is pink. I'm using up some scraps. Um, this is index. I'm, I'm sorry, no, this is cardstock, 110 pound cardstock. Let me find one. This is, let me see if it's cardstock. Oh, I printed on the inside. This is um, 65 pound cardstock, and this is 110 pound index. So you can see these are very similar in weight, and this is much thicker. So things to consider as you're getting ready to make your choices for materials. All right, so this is a super easy project. It is great for beginners. A couple of things that you're going to want to have with you. Um, a way to cut. Okay, first let's say you're going to want to have your um, images printed out. So in this case, I have my cover printed and I have my interior sheets. And I printed on five um, eight and a half by 11 and they will be cut in half to eight and a half by five and a half and that will give me 10 sheets um, in my signature um, which is on the high side um, I don't know if you saw this book this book I could probably flatten it more by putting it in you know under a press or something but it is pretty thick in terms of the paper even though this is just copy paper so I might in my next um, versions just take out a sheet or two and I'm also in this one using embroidery floss so that makes for a heavier heavier spine area so you want to have your cover and this is an optional flap you saw this one does have it you don't have to use it I like having it in my journals because you never know when you need to tuck something somewhere so you need that and you need whatever papers you're going to use for your insides for your signatures You'll need a way to cut this. I'm going to use a knife and ruler. You can use scissors. I'll make a mention about what I did with this one. It's a little bit different than other kits I've put together. And I don't know if you can see it, but there, there's a line here, but it's really light because I wanted to be able to bleed the color all the way to the edge. I didn't want to just stop at the line where it should be cut because then you, you risk having that white fleshy part even more white and fleshy. So there's a very, very, very light line that you can trim with if you're using scissors. If you're using a knife and ruler like me, you could just line up straight to these trim marks and um, that'll, that should follow the line as well. So it's just something, it's the way I like to do it. Um, I would leave out the line if it were just for me and just use the trim marks. But okay, so then you're going to need thread and a needle and you can use any kind of thread for this. You saw on the other one I used embroidery floss you can use bookbinders wax linen. You can use upholstery thread. You can use regular old household thread. Two things. If you're using upholstery thread, which is I think what I'm going to use today, um, you're going to use two str one strand doubled and you're gonna sew it into the, the signatures in with that way. If you're using regular polyester uh, household thread, I would use at least two strands in the needle. You could even use three. Um, that way, if one of them were to break, the others would still hold hold strong. So, and then bookbinders, wax linen, you just need one, but it's kind of overkill for this project. What else do you need? You can use some clips. These will be handy, whether it's just um, clothespins or these little dollar store clips are great for keeping the signatures and the covers together. And then you will need an awl. And if you're going to add the flap, you'll want some glue. So I add the flap last, so we'll do that last and um, we'll just put the book together first. So, as I said, so let's start with this. We want to first score it. It's pretty important. This is very thick. If you're using this thick paper, um, you want to score it. Otherwise, it, it's going to fold. Um, it could, it could crack when it folds. So, and it's gonna crack anyway. It'll crack less if you score it. Now I'm gonna use this little stylus that I think another dollar store 
treasure. Um, and I do have um, score marks, score lines here, and you could just score like this. Now, you've seen me in the past score with the back of my knife, and I could do that. But a paper this thick, you really want something that's a little bit wider because you want to give it more fiber to bend. So I just scored it, and that's all we need to do there. And now you can either use scissors or line up the trim marks and cut them out. Okay, so we'll cut out the, the flap later. So here you are. This one is Field Notes from Nature and it has, this was going to the husband and you can see it's got some caterpillars and a butterfly. She's very much into buggy things. So now we're gonna fold in our score. You can see it makes for a nice fold, nice even, 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 even. And we are going to smack it. With a bone folder, you can use anything. The back of the scissors work if you don't have a bone folder. Okay, so there's the cover. Now I'm going to take my paper over to the paper cutter and cut these babies. All right, so now I've got my, my sheets and they are eight and a half by 11, cut down on the long end to five and a half by eight and a half. So as I mentioned, I used 10, but I think I can keep one or two out for this and it might fold a little better. I mean, it folds fine, but it might lay a little flatter. So I'm looking for one particular sheet in here. As I mentioned, this comes with some kits, the graph style ledger, and this comes with other kits. So, oh, I took out more sheets than I thought here. Okay, so do that. So that should give me eight sheets. Now you want to fold these sheets in half. Now for this job, I wouldn't normally do it this way. I'd normally fold each one. But since these are going to get trimmed off at the sides, we have a little bit of, of leeway here in just folding them all at once and saving some time. Okay, you still want to give it a good burnish. Okay, so now we're going to do a little test fit in here. And that fits great. Okay, so now, as you can see, these interior sheets are too big. So this is where we want a knife and a ruler, preferably. You can do this with scissors, and some people do with scissors far better than anything I do with a knife, but I am not a straight cutter. So I'm going to use all the help I can get. So now when you're cutting this many layers of paper, you don't want to like strong arm it and try and get it all cut off at once. What you want to do is just go very lightly along the edge and let the pages come apart on their own. Oh look, scraps, yay! Okay, so I see I missed a couple here. I was a little sloppy, so same thing. You're just going to clean it up, clean up that edge. There might be some fraying. There would have been a lot of fraying if I had really pressed hard. So now I'm taking it away. You can see a nice, beautiful edge there. Okay, we're almost done. Well, okay, we're not entirely almost done, but we're close. So next we're going to punch the holes. Now, this is my punching cradle. I think you've probably seen this before too. All right. So now we need to punch our signatures. And to do that, we place it into some thick book or whoever you want. This can also be punched kind of freehand. I mean, you could just punch, but this is so much simpler and makes for a neater um, alignment. So we want to make sure that our pages are lined up top and bottom with the top and bottom of the booklet. Looks like they are. And then with it very vertical, you can put some clips on. 
These are just dollar store clips. It just helps keep it all together. Now you're going to grab your awl. Your first hole is going to be somewhere right in the middle. And you can really just eyeball it. It does not have to be exactly in the middle. Depends how neurotic you're feeling. And then you're just going to push through all the layers, like so. Your next hole is going to be about a half inch down from the top. And again, it really is just a, a guess guesstimate for, for the space from the top and the bottom. So there you can see the holes went all the way through. That's a beautiful thing. Now I'm going to thread a needle, which we know is always an enchanting time here, Oops. here at Christine's studio. So as I mentioned, I'm going to use upholstery thread for this because it's big enough or, or sturdy enough. And the thing is, I'm just going to double it. So I'm going to take about 18 inches, I think, somewhere about there. And you need to decide which side you want the knot to go on that uh, once you've sewn in the signatures, if you want the knot on the outside, like I did here, almost like a decorative piece with the embroidery thread, then you start on the outside and you wind up back on the outside. For this one, because like I said, I'm giving it to the husband and he doesn't care much for bows. I don't think he has anything against bows, but he probably doesn't need a bow or a fancy thing on his little notebook that I'm making for him. And so I'm going to put mine on the inside. So to that end, <laughs> see, I should have pre-done this. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm going to use a double piece of upholstery thread to do this which means just putting a knot at the bottom just to keep it together. See, <laughs> it's cameras and knots. I cannot tie a knot on camera. If this camera weren't on, this knot would be tied, the book would be sewn, and I would be off having lunch somewhere. But because it's on camera, oh, there we go. I know, there's probably a much simpler way to do that. All right, so let me get rid of the punching cradle. All right, and we want to keep that like so. Now you could take the clips off. I'll just leave them on for now. And as I mentioned, since I want the knot in the inside, I'm going to start on the inside. Oh, that's interesting. There it is, okay. So I've gone in the inside. I'm going to leave a tail. It doesn't have to be big because I'm going to trim these quite close to the spine. And now we go in this way through all the layers. So you, you want to go kind of straight. I'm going to come in this way and just tighten it up. There we go. Now on the inside, we're going to leave this and go all the way up to the top hole and go through here. I did catch my, you want to make sure that the thread is not on the middle. Like mine was on the inside and the outside on that one. So there you go. And then you're going to go back in through that middle hole. And you're going to try and come up on the other side. Sometimes this book is easier if you close it. Oh, I keep missing that, that last little sheet. There we go. All right, so here's your tail. This was the original tail. You could even clip that to the clip if you'd wanted to. And you want this longer thread to be in the middle of your two tails. And then you're going to pull it tight. Check the outside. That looks good. And then simply knot it. This knot should go a little easier. But you know, one can never be sure with me. Here we go. And I'm going to do a double, you know, square knot here.
and then I'm going to trim. I'll leave that like that. There it is. One finished, super easy, very charming notebook. Now I round the corners. And by rounding the corners, I start with the cover and then I will round also every piece of paper on the inside. So I'm going to use, this one I'm not as wild about, but it's easier for doing the interior pages. Um, so I'm gonna use the smaller quarter inch setting here, which tends to be a little finicky on this one. It gives me a little bit of a hangnail sometimes. But for this, it's going to work. And you'll notice I didn't even talk about inking, but you can ink it, and you could have inked it already. So there's all of the corners are done. Now these corners, we could be daring and see if we think we can do the whole, whole lot of them at once. I like to be able to see the corners that I'm chomping with this one because if I don't get it lined up close to perfect, like I said, it really doesn't give me a, the corners that I want. Okay, and that's good though because it allowed me to go through several pages at once. Otherwise, if you have a smaller or different kind of corner rounder, you might have to do a few at a time or even individually, depending on your tools. All right, so done. It needs to be inked though. Okay, I'm not gonna ink it. I'll, I'll ink it later. So now we want to um, do, the, do the little flap in the back, the pocket. And that's just a matter of cutting this out, which I will do here. There are different color trim marks for this than for, for the cover. Okay. Okay. It's a little pocket piece and it's going to go in here and I'm going to leave the, I don't know, I think I'm going to put it in this way. So, so one thing I could have done and po possibly should have done is I could have um, round or not rounded the corners before putting in the pocket, but I'll just do it now. And I'm going to round this corner. And I could just simply round this corner as well. Now it goes a little short of the top, so you don't really need to round it, although it does go kind of in the middle of that curve, so you'll want to do that one too. There we go. And just glue that in. Now what I did on my version to give a little bit more ease of input is I rounded this whole corner using a can. So I'm going to do that now. And that is done quite easily by simply lining up the can with this edge and this edge and cutting. And hopefully with a knife sharp enough to do it the first time. Now, yep, just one more little spot down here. There we go. Okay, so this I am going to ink before we get going, gluing it in because that will make me happy later because it will be hard to ink this edge once this is glued in. So I'm just going to do these quickly and then glue it in and of course you're only going to glue the bottom and the outer edge and you want to stay as close to the edge of the paper as you can Line it up so it's just about perfect. There we go. Lovely. I'm really eating up my hands lately, like to the point of bleeding. I 
don't know what I did with my bone folder, so we're going to use the back of the scissors to make that stick. And there we have it. All right, so now I am going to, because I can, do some of these other edges. And of course, I would do the entire inside. And you could do it in any fashion that you like. And that is how you put the book together. And it's a really great little gift. Um, a lot of my friends get these. I make them for them with different themes. Um, there are so many. Here's one for my gardening friend um, who likes to note the kinds of things that she puts in the garden, certainly anything new. And another mention, just to finish up, is that this paper that I used, that I printed this on, was sort of a creamy grayish. It wasn't, it wasn't white, so, but it looks beautiful with this paper, um, aged paper. This one was kind of a pinkish, and still it, it looks good. It looks better than, say, if it were white. Let me see, if it were white, this is what you'd have. And that looks, I don't know, a little bit too white. So if you have it, cream or gray or something a little bit more aged is your best choice, but that's all there is to it, very simple. So again, lots of options and threads and papers and, you know, and aesthetic choices you can make, um, but you'll wind up with some really cute um, travel notebooks. That's it. Go create. Be awesome. We'll see you next time. All right. So what if you are just fundamentally against sewing, even easy sewing like this? Um, I hear you. I'm with you. I got you. So all you need to do is staple it. And I will show you how um, this this book has been assembled like all of the others up until the point where I would sew it. And instead, I'm just going to clip it to keep it in in order. You want to make sure. There we go. So now it's all aligned. And you want to look at your stapler and understand where the staple comes out. So you need to know where on the spine to align the stapler. And in this case, my stapler has a little bit of an indicator right here in this curve. This one has a similar division right there that shows this is where the stapler is going to eject itself from the machine. So you have to line that part up with the book. Okay. So I'm going to do the as best as I can. And for a small book like this, I think two staples is sufficient. So I'm looking at both sides, trying to not get my head in the frame. I'm really getting better about that. And then I'm going to look again on both sides and go for it. Ah, oh, talk about perfection. Okay. So that's using my little indicator. If your stapler doesn't have any sort of indication for where it um, staples, you know, uh, releases the staples, do some tests on your own stapler and you'll figure it out. Now, what if your stapler was too short to accommodate the width of the, the book? Well, then another trick is to open up the stapler and staple into something like an eraser or a piece of styrofoam, or in this case, I'm using my little um, glue remover. I'm going to line it up, same thing, make it straight. And I've stapled straight into here, and I could take this off and use a bone folder or something else and just bend these down. And you do want to get them down as far as possible because they will otherwise be dangerous. This is also a good method if you want to staple more than just a few pages and you're looking to get um, a, a little bit deeper. So now, as you can see, stapled, wonderful. You have no excuse, you non-sewers. <laughs>